And then this morning, there was a growing focus on who knew what about allegations of sexual abuse by a former football coach and, and also when they knew it. Two officials at Penn State University faced charges of covering up the alleged abuse. Critics say the school's famed head coach, Joe Paterno, should have done more to stop his longtime assistant. Here's correspondent Michelle Miller with the latest. The day they gave up their posts, Penn State Athletic Director Tim Curley and former Vice President of Finance Gary Schultz were arraigned on charges they lied to a grand jury and failed to report a sexual assault on a minor that allegedly took place on campus. Released on $75,000 bail, the two men were named in a three-year investigation of former Penn State defensive coordinator Jerry Sandusky. From the outset of this investigation, which goes back over three years, has always maintained his innocence. Sandusky is accused of sexually assaulting at least eight victims dating back 15 years, State Police Commissioner Frank Noonan. This is not a case about football. It's not a case about universities. It's a case about children who have had their innocence stolen from them and a culture that did nothing to stop it or prevent it from happening to others. Pennsylvania's Attorney General Linda Kelly calls Sandusky a sexual predator. He found his victims through the Second Mile, the charity he founded in 1977 for at-risk youth. Sandusky's friends are standing behind him. So there's nothing that I've ever seen that would lead me to believe that he would do anything of this nature. But at least one witness stepped forward in 2002. A graduate assistant testified he saw Sandusky in a locker room shower having sex with a naked boy. He told head coach Joe Paterno the next day, who in turn notified Curley. Both Curley and Schultz met with the staffer, but never followed up with police. Their inaction likely allowed a child predator to continue to victimize children for many, many years. The attorney general says Coach Paterno isn't facing criminal charges because he quickly reported the allegations to his superiors. But at his weekly news conference today, he's likely to face tough questions about what more he could have done. Michelle Miller, CBS News, State College, Pennsylvania. Joining us now is Pennsylvania State Police Commissioner Frank Noonan, who has worked on this case for several years, starting when he was Chief of Criminal Investigations in the State Attorney General's office. Uh, Frank, good morning to you. Good morning. This case seems to get more revolting by the day. If it went on for so long and started so long ago, why has it taken so long for this to come out? Well, that's an interesting question, and, uh, and, uh, and certainly... Uh, is something that we, everyone in law enforcement regrets. This went on for 15 years, and uh, you have to understand that these things are done in secret. They're, the victims are children. They're usually from uh, dysfunctional homes. They have some problems. And uh, so who's going to believe them? So it's not until those children grow older, become adults, that they can come forward and, uh, and, and tell police what's going on. But even if they're, you're reluctant to believe them, if there's that many... Doesn't that become a bigger issue? Well, certainly. But, uh, but see, one child doesn't know about another child. These things are all isolated incidents until law enforcement is able to bring them together. And that's uh, what we've done uh, in, with this presentment. Uh, Frank, Joe Paterno took this up the chain at, um, at, at, at Penn State, says he did what he was supposed to do. My question is, did he do enough? Well, you know, Joe Paterno seems to be the focus of uh, everybody's uh, attention in this. But there, are, there were other people, a lot of other people, that seem to have had some information that didn't come forward. Legally, Joe Paterno certainly did what he was required to do. And uh, you'd have to ask him if, if, if what he did was enough, what he actually knew. But uh, the requirement is, the legal requirement is for you to pass it up your chain in the school and then for them to notify the uh, legal authorities. Totally understand what the legal requirement is. I guess my question to you is, and, and not doubting that Joe Paterno is a legend on the football field, um, if you were counseling some other coach who may be dealt with this in the future, would you advise them to inform authorities? Well, not just a coach. Any person in any walk of life, I would advise if they have information about uh, sexual predators with a child, that they would contact the, the police. I, I, uh, that's what I would ask anyone to do. And if the information had come forward earlier in these situations, they don't continue for 15 years. Um, <clears throat> Frank, any more charges that are going to be filed against Sandusky here? 
Uh, well, the investigation is ongoing, so we'll have to just wait and see. Uh, but uh, that's a possibility. Uh, there's uh, other charges or something that, that uh, may come in the future up, up against him or other people. But we'll just have to wait and see about that. Frank, what are you, by the way, what are you expecting to hear from Joe Paterno at this, this news conference this afternoon? Well, Jeff, I just want to make it clear. I don't care about Joe Paterno. I don't care about Penn State. I care about the kids that were victimized in this case. That's where my focus is. I, so, I, I, uh, I understand that. What he I think says I think or doesn't. What he says or doesn't say. I understand that. I think some yeah, of these care. kids might say they care too, because maybe if he had spoken up or someone else, and not putting all the focus on if someone had spoken up to police, uh, maybe this uh, this could have been cut off much earlier. Uh, Frank Dunan, we do appreciate right, you coming yeah. on this morning. Thank you very much. You bet. Thank you.